Coach, one of the guys I want to ask you about was Contavious Street. We saw him listed at defensive end going into the bowl game. Is, is he a guy that's going to be there long term, or can he just kind of play tackle or end depending upon whatever you need? It just depends on the health of our team, to be honest with you. He can do both. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we like him at both. I think uh, it's more comfortable for him on the edge, maybe, just because he's been there longer. But he's done a good job in there playing defensive tackle. And a little bit depends on what we're playing against, you know. Um, some of the spread teams having him inside, it's kind of nice having that speed in there. So, But uh, with the depth that we have and the injuries that you're dealing with, sometimes having a guy that can be a swing guy is very helpful. Reggie Gillespie really came on at the end of the year. How have you seen him improve throughout his freshman year? Well, he's just gotten more comfortable and confident because of that. You know, he's a he's a very intelligent person, and sometimes guys that uh, are really cerebral think about things and slows them down. And towards the end of the year, he just started playing, and you can see it. And so, you know, we're like I told him at the beginning of the year, it's a process, and you have to be patient. You're going to get an opportunity. When you do, you have to seize the moment. And, you know, he did that at times this year, and I thought at the end of the year he really ran strong, ran behind his pads. The way that Reggie and Naheem finished the year, and I'm guessing you'll have Matt back mm -hmm. next year, do you feel like you can get the running game back to the level where it was uh, last last season? Well, I think, you know, barring injuries, we'll have a lot of talent, and we'll have depth, and we'll have game experience back there. So it's going to come down to the offensive line and, and replacing the three seniors, you know, that's going to be the biggest thing in the off season, and excited about you know some of the guys that have played in these bowl practices watching Emmanuel McGirt and Aaron Wiltz and, and uh, Garrett Bradbury these guys have taken a lot of reps and so it's been fun to see them out there and uh, this class coming in will be important too adding depth to our offensive line that's going to be really what it's all about when it comes down to our run game. The way that Hines came on at the end of the year was it more than just being comfortable or being more in a position at running back there at the end that he was you know, accustomed to, or do you think it's just a natural progression of a freshman? I think uh, that's his comfort zone because he's played there more, which, you know, we knew that going into the year that, you know, take him a little while at receiver just because he hasn't been out there as much, and he got better and better at that as the year went on. Um, I also think he, his confidence grew, you know, as he made plays at receivers, he made plays as a returner. Wherever you put him, he played better because he was more confident that he could do it. And, all those things combined, I think, at the end, having him a tailback really helped him. I mean, he kind of jumps off the page for you he does. in terms of being a difference maker, playmaker. Yeah, I mean, when you have the injuries we've had, you know, and, and you have one guy that is really special, it really stands out. You know, I mean, when, when you had all those guys healthy at one time, it was less noticeable. But right now, you know, he's a difference maker for us, and obviously, you want to get touches to those guys as much as you can. How happy are you with the progress of Sterling Lucas as a GA? <laughs> yeah, Sterling's a great guy. He's a good young coach. Um, he uh, understands the scheme. I think he also understands what it's like being a player and how to relate to those guys and how to communicate a certain way from a player's standpoint. He's going to be a really good football coach for somebody. And he's been with us now as a, a student coach and a GA and the whole time I've been here. So. You know, hopeful that he finds a full-time job coming out of his GA career and, and eventually that I can hire him back someday. And for those who don't really understand the concept of GA, what all does that entail to work and such? Um, you know, it's a 24-7 gig and, and there's a little bit of coaching going on. There's a lot of scout team work. There's a ton of breakdown, film uh, entering data into the computer on your films, putting together scouting reports, uh, practice plans, making sure all the scout teams are ready, you know, coaching the other side of the ball. So. For us, what Sterling does, being a defensive GA, is he coaches the scout team offense and teaches them how to play against our defense in practice. And so you know, he's a very important part of what we do. You obviously don't think it should be a problem for him to get a job. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's yeah. there's a lot of guys that want jobs. Right. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, there's more jobs. I mean, there's more people than there are jobs in college football. So whoever gets him will be really good. And you know, he has the option to come back for one more year if if he can't find one. So. Either way, you know, he'll be in good hands. Does Prescott remind you of anybody? Um, that we've played against or just in general? Just in general. Um, yeah, he's a good player. I mean, uh, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's thick. Yeah. I mean, he's not overly tall. I mean, I think they list him at 6'2", but when you look at him, I mean, he's got a really big lower body. Um, he's put together. I mean, he looks like Tebow, you know, like presence-wise, but he can throw the football a lot better. He's thrown for over 300 yards a game, so 
he's a really good quarterback. And the thing that you know impresses you the most when things aren't good and they break down, he's just really calm, makes good decisions, and runs when he should run, throws it away when he should throw it away. And he's a good quarterback. He's got good weapons around him. During bowl practices, I'm sure you get to look at guys who've been on the scout team in your system. Are there any young guys in particular that have jumped out and caught your eye? Um, you know, starting with the scout team offense, uh, Aaron Wiltz and, and Emmanuel McGirt on our offensive line have done a nice job all year. Um, Chandler Belk, uh, Brian Sessoms, Freddie Simmons, uh, as our scout team receivers have, have worked really hard. Um, excited about Johnny Frazier. I've mentioned that. Obviously, for him to be the scout team player of the year kind of says that. And on the scout team defense, Tyrone Riley is a guy, defensive end, that's really worked hard and had a good year down there, and so is Jerry Moorhead. Do you think your receivers can make a appreciable improvement going in, going into next year? Like, do you anticipate getting more production from them, getting something more well, out of them? Yeah, that, we need know? to. I mean, I think you got three guys that'll be seniors, and then you've got a, a group here of redshirt guys that uh, have been impressive. And then Steph uh, Lewis, who just walked out of here, played as a freshman, was injured, and has put on 15 pounds and looks really good. And then I hope that this recruiting class comes through, you know, because we'll have a couple guys that are longer than what we have. If we sign who we think we're going to, that add height to the group, and that'll help us. You, but you yeah, to answer your question, we need more production. Yeah, you made the coaching yeah. change last year in order to get mm -hmm. more out of that group. I mean, do you feel like you're moving in that direction? I do. I mean, I think that group collectively played better than they did last year. You know, last year we had one guy stand out, and this year I think as a unit they've been very consistent. You know, we don't have the big play production across the board. But um, they've been consistent, you know. They've played hard every week. They're working hard for each other, and they've been very coachable. And uh, Coach McDonald's done a good job getting what he can out of a group, and he's got to continue to develop those guys and hope that junior to senior year you see those guys take the next step that a lot of seniors do. And your confidence level in McClendon? Jalen? Yeah. As a passer, I'm really confident. Yeah. You know, it's just the game management stuff now that you got to get him the, the reps. But as a passer and, and the way that he – is around the guys and how they're around him. He's got an electric personality around the players that they're going to play for him. And Jacoby Myers is an exceptional talent, too. He's just been injured. So it's going to be a good competition when he gets back. I'm excited about that. What uh, stuff do you have lined up in Charlotte to do, activities, et cetera? Uh, you know, the bowl puts together quite a few things for the guys. I know there's some community service opportunities that we'll have at the Children's Hospital and uh, mm -hmm. doing some gifts, uh, I think, putting together some gifts. And then um, I think we're on the Charlotte Speedway one day. Well, those are the two things that I know about for sure. And then, uh, you know, the coaches and have some time with their families and being in state, I'm sure our players will get a lot of family time as well. You ever been in a race car before? I have. Okay. Yeah, I actually got to drive one when I was in Illinois. So okay. I'm pretty excited about it. It's it pretty nice. I hope the weather's okay. So you're going to take really the wheel in Charlotte? Go on a wet track, huh? You're going to take the wheel in Charlotte? If they let me, I will, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what 